Each time be like a letter to myself Reminded that I was blinded by no remorse I threw shots, he responded with a cross Young sheep temporarily lost Shepherd keep me covered here, never cut me How's it going? What's your name? Other Fregoso. I'm Ryan. Other Meyer. I'm Ryan. How's it going? Yeah, well. You guys are Mormons, right? Yeah. yeah. So, I had a, I had a couple questions for you. Okay. If, if I had three minutes to live, and I wanted to inherit the kingdom, how would I get there? What would you tell me? I'm sorry, I tell you. I had three minutes. I had a three knife minutes. in my back. I got three minutes to live. What would you tell me? Uh, well... We believe that obtaining the kingdom of God is a process. It's, um, it requires different steps, you know. Uh, we need to be baptized. God should need to receive the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. um, and to do that, we have to become clean of our sins. So in three minutes, it's not enough time, but you always have the next life to repent then. So wouldn't you say that that means that justification isn't by just faith then? It's by works? Yeah, that's what we believe. But... What would you say if the Bible the Bible is against that though? The Bible says your justification is by faith, just by your your faith in, in Jesus Christ. Yeah, no, we need faith to be saved. Yeah. So that, doesn't that contradict? Because if it's by faith, but the Mormons are saying you got to do works. Yeah, no, the Bible says that too. Faith and actions are connected. You know, mm -hmm. you're not gonna act and do something good if you don't have the faith. Like I'm not gonna follow follow Jesus Christ if I don't have faith that He's my Savior. I'm not gonna go and repent and change. I don't believe that can get really saved. So they're really they're connected. You know, do you, Cause the Bible clearly states it. Do you have a Bible on you? I I have it in Spanish. Oh, I have. I have. Hold on. Okay. Okay. It's in Acts. Acts 16. Someone asked the poor, what do I have to do to be saved? Acts 16.30. And he said, sir, what must I do to be saved? So they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. You know your household. It doesn't mean no baptism. Baptism is not required. So go to, go to math. Matthew chapter five. In Matthew chapter five? Yeah. Unless you're about that, you're not in my team, right? Five minutes three. Three? I've got three. You talking about when you talk about the Nicodemus? Yeah. John three? This is four, chapter five. Five? Oh, you said five, right? You said five. Keep going, another thing over here, so. I'm just trying to have them out. You mean being born again of the, the modern spirit? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. That one? That's John, John, John three. John three. John three, five, Ooh. right? <clears throat> John three five You know your Bible? A little bit. That's awesome. Have a nice day. Yeah, there it is. New verse. So he said, "Yeah, surely I must say, you must unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom." But then he said, "How can I, a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time in his mother's womb?" Mm -hmm. Jesus said, uh, "Most surely I say to you, unless one is born again of water, that's a birth." That's a birth. Baptism, right? You see that baptism? baptism? Yeah. So where's the birth? That's why he's saying I can't enter my mother's womb again. He said that you already been born of the water. No. So in that part, Nicodemus is like, so how am I? How am I gonna get born again? Am I gonna have to go crawl in my mother's womb and be born again? Yeah. At this point, he's saying no. You be born of the water, okay? Be born of baptism. You be born of the Spirit. And give you the Holy Ghost. That's what he's saying. You'll be born of water and of the Spirit. That's how you be born again. A baptism by immersion. A baptism, we mm -hmm. go down. The death of our old life, and then we come back up. Symbolism of the birth of our new life. Mm -hmm. That's what that means. And then the gift of the Holy Ghost by fire. That's mm -hmm. the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. So you symbolize that to me, baptism. Yes, I yeah. do. But that will contradict 
That will contradict when the thief was on the cross. When the thief was on the cross, when he was talking to Jesus, he repented on the cross and said, I believe who you are, who you say you are. And what did Jesus say to him? He said, today you will be in the paradise with me. The thief on the cross didn't have time to be baptized. So that goes back to it. We're justified just by faith and not works. And plus Peter said in, in, in First Peter, he said the baptism just cleanses you. He just washes you. It washes your conscience. Because when you get baptized, like you're, you're openly saying, okay, I agree with the faith. I, 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 I'm going to follow Christ. But it doesn't save you. Because the thief on the cross, he, how can he enter the kingdom if he wasn't baptized? I do not know the answer to that one. But that's I know what I'm that saying, because it, it's not by works. I interpret it as by the born of the water, your mother, and then you're born of the spirit. When you repent, you receive the Holy Spirit. When do you think you receive the Holy Spirit? We believe in confirmation, mm -hmm. which is after you're baptized, you get a blessing. So like a man puts your hands on your head and he gives you a blessing. And that blessing using the priesthood, which is the power of God, he says, receive the Holy Ghost. Mm. But so you don't, you don't, but in the Bible, it's when you repent, you receive it. That's why this, in Acts, they had someone had the, they had the uh, Holy Spirit before they even got baptized. We believe in the gift of the Holy Ghost, which is the Holy Ghost testifies about truth, right? That's yeah. his job. So we can always feel the Holy Ghost when we do good things. But when you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, which is what we believe that the, but the baptism of fire is, that's after you're baptized and you can have the Holy Ghost with you always, regardless of what's going on. If you're worthy, you can have it. But before you have to be doing like reading your scriptures to feel it. But now you have the privilege of having it with you always. And that's what we believe is the difference between the gift of the Holy Ghost and just the Holy Ghost in general. Does we, that make sense? Yeah, yeah, I understand yeah. that. But if the if the scripture goes against it, what do you what do you go with? You go with the Book of Mormon, or you go with the Bible? Yeah. Like that's if, a good if, if that if that contradicts scripture, which one goes? Because shouldn't yeah. it be the Bible? Yeah, no. So that's exactly why we need a prophet. A prophet is literally the talks of God face to face, mm -hmm. like Moses, you know, in the Mount. He saw God face to face and he talks and he asked him those questions like, hey, I'm confused. You know, the scriptures aren't super clear. Like, how do I do? And then God gives him a direct answer. And that's why we believe in having modern prophets, prophets here today on the earth. And that's why we believe in prophets. And we go by what the prophet says because he interprets the Bible. And sometimes like the Bible's been changed so many times, so many different versions. That it, one can be translation. One yeah. can be translations, you know, I can be kind of confused. Mm -hmm. That's why we believe in prophets. So even if that prophet goes against what the word says, which one do you stay with? Yeah. Do you stay with the, the word and, and, and leave the prophet and don't listen to the prophet? Or do you change the word? That's, that's what. So we have the Book of Mormon, right? So we don't, we're not the Book of Mormon or the Bible. We use them together. Mm -hmm. We believe that the Book of Mormon has the things that the Bible doesn't have, you know? Because after time, the Bible has changed. People were like, well, that's what I don't want to do that. Let's change it. That contradicts what Jesus said. He said, the earth and heaven will pass away, but my words will never, they're never going to disappear. God's not going to let his word. So that's when, it, when when I hear that, that goes against the, what the Bible says. So then that, that leaves me at a, a cross in the road. Which one do I believe? Yeah. Who, who do you believe? I, I had to believe the Bible okay, over any other prophet. Who does the Bible testify of? Jesus. Who would you believe more, Jesus or the Bible? Jesus is the Bible. This is God's word, but, but Jesus should is you God. be at a crossroads, like you said? Yeah. Would you believe Jesus or the Bible? I never had that kind. I never had. I never came to that of just reading the Bible. How about just hypothetically, if it did occur, it wouldn't. It, that's what I'm saying. It wouldn't occur because that this is God's word, right? Yeah. Jesus is God, so He wouldn't contradict Himself. Yeah, but. I mean, it says that we have to be baptized, and then it says that it's only faith. Like, so then which one? You might be well, a little confused. Because that—that's what. That—that's when I say, okay, I'll be reading the the, the in context. Because in Acts, he would have told him, you have to be baptized. And it says faith is alone. That's why, in, in even John 16, he says you have to believe. Where's James? Anyone that believes. James. Yeah. Will be saved. Will have eternal life. Yeah. If you confess. That Jesus is your Lord, confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. It was just about believing. That's how the thief in the cross can sure. can go to can go. Yeah. We we have to go. We actually are going to do a baptism. It's at one. Yeah. And so we are just can we get your phone number? Yeah. Because yeah, we yeah. have a lot of good questions. Mm -hmm. And we have people that can answer them. We have more time. It's a 
down with you. Mm -hmm. So, what's your name? Ryan. Ryan, that's right. Mm -hmm. And where do you live? So I, I live right on uh, 19, 19 Sweet Street. Sweet Street. What's your number? A 401. Mm -hmm. 345. Okay. 5229. Two nine. Awesome. And you have a lot of good questions, and they'll come and answer them, huh? Answer. Thank you. No problem. Where y'all the Fergoso? Yeah. James one. Okay. Ah, I'll leave you with one final scripture before we leave. Mm -hmm. James one five. It says, "If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him." Exactly. So, brother, that's what I mean. Like this, yeah, rely on his word and, and he's right. a generous guy. Ask him. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, can we? We'll call you. Where do you live, brother? I live right like two yeah, blocks. Yeah. Two blocks. Oh, you have his address. Yeah, yeah, he got he got my information. Where are you from, brother? I'm I'm from Rhode Island. Yeah. I'm from there. So just so we are the Spanish missionaries. Do you just speak English then? Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Why well, you guys only speak? We no, work. So we have people here who work with English, Portuguese, yeah. Spanish, and we work yeah. with the Spanish. Yeah. Okay, okay. So we can tell you, yeah, but like, it would just be more probably the sister missionaries. They'd love to stop by your house sometime. We'll give you a call. And will set up an appointment. All right. Well, that sounds All right. good. God bless, guys. It's nice meeting you, Ryan. Thank you, thank you so much. You have a good day. You too.